Well, next uh, with us here in the studio, standing in the general election in September, is Laurie Hooper for Ramsey, Lib Van chairman. And uh, well, I mean, I know literally as we talked, you've got your introductory letter straight yes. off the press. Um, you have quite got interesting numbers on there. I mean, about questions you've asked, the things you've done. You've definitely been. Um, well, almost like an MLC to a lot of people. You're a very detailed man. Would that be how you see yourself yeah. in this last five years? Absolutely, yeah. So a lot of what we do is quite complex, and most of it goes well above my head, if I'm honest. But uh, yeah, I think that, that means you have to put the time and the effort into to pay attention to the detail, because sometimes a word here or a word there, it really changes the whole landscape when you're talking about legislation. And, and that's become very clear, uh, mm. especially during the COVID uh, regulations as everything's getting passed. It's sometimes a couple of slips of the pen, and, and you could be locking people up for all sorts of reasons. So it's, it's absolutely vital to get it right. It's definitely part of the job that I enjoy, and it's something I think I've done pretty well over the last few years. And Chairman of Live Van. Um, leader, party leader, actually. Party leader, that's yes. right. Sorry, yes, get that. Sorry. Party leader. Um, you, you've got three, the you and two other candidates. Yes. That's not as many as maybe in the past. I mean, what's, what's the thinking behind this? So what we've, what, what has the different types of election strategy, I suppose, is what, what it boils down to. So what we've settled on this time around is actually we'd rather run fewer candidates uh, in places we think actually they stand a really good chance of getting elected. So we've got yeah. three very good candidates uh, now, myself, Michael Joseph and Paul Weatherall. Uh, and I think actually we've, all three of us stand a very good chance of, of getting back in. We're all very, very good candidates. All of us will make very great MHKs. Mm -hmm. So actually that's a, a better approach, I think, than maybe just throwing 20 candidates at the wall and seeing how many of them uh, stick. And I know that's been tried in, in some uh, elections in the past. It's what they kind of do across, where it's just yeah. to get anyone to stand for a seat. But actually I'm, I'm much uh, much more in favour of getting uh, good quality people to stand to make sure we get good quality MHKs as, as a result. So that's it? Just the three of you will be standing? So. At the moment, yeah, that's right. right. Still in discussions you, with a few others, but ah. three is our three is our core number and actually if we end up with three I'm perfectly happy with that. Haven't got enough there to rule the, the whole roost then as such? No, but that was never the intention actually and I think what, what, what I've find, found over the last few years is you don't necessarily need uh, a majority in order to have a significant amount of influence over what goes on. So you'd be surprised to think at the number of Liberal running policies that have found their way into the programme for government or into government announcements mm -hmm. in recent years and when that's just been me and Kate, so just the two of us, mm -hmm. or in the last year and a half just me. So you can have a significant impact and I think if we do get three uh, of our candidates in plus another couple from uh, from Labour and the Green Party as well. I think we can make a real difference. And I ask all the members because I mean, you you have your your party beliefs, but you have your own items you can add on on top of that if yes, it doesn't conflict. Yeah. Absolutely. So the way we're slightly different in Liberal Manning, we don't have what you'd think of as a party whip. So at no point have have I ever said to my my candidates, actually, this is the party. Has happened in the past though, hasn't it? Okay. No, didn't no. you? There's no well, there was fallout in the past. I thought you know, people being asked to vote against something they believe in. Not at all. So that's oh, okay. that's something that's happened with me and Kate as well over the last few years when we were in together. Uh, I don't remember Kate ever at any point saying you must vote this way. We, right. You've checked hands hard record. The amount of times yeah. we voted different directions on things was. Uh, so you've got your own good. independent thoughts as well as a party. Absolutely. So the, we we all agree on a general set of principles. And we all agree on where we're trying to get to, but actually how we get there, we might have slightly different perspectives on. And that's really helpful because people in Air and Michael, where, where Paul is standing, might have a slightly different perspective mm -hmm. to people in Ramsey or people in Douglas East where Michael is mm -hmm. standing. And ultimately, we're here to represent our constituents. They have to come first, not not the party. The party is, is something that kind of binds us together, but absolutely we have to be able to, to run our own course. What are the big items in Ramsey on the, you know, the local side of things when you go door knocking? What are you telling them? What are they telling you? <coughs> Well, in fairness, we think we're telling each other the same things. Uh, so the, the big messages I'm hearing are, are uh, number one, obviously, is coronavirus and coming out the other side of this with our exit in, in one piece and getting uh, businesses and jobs back on track. But the other one that's coming out quite strongly is housing, uh, real real housing yeah, issues. Yeah, everybody now. Yeah, it, it's been an issue on the island for a while. It was uh, formed a core part of my 2016 manifesto, actually. It was a big focus of mine when I was a commissioner before then. And it, housing is an area that I think, actually, we haven't made enough progress on in the last few years. Got the answers? I don't think so. No, that's the challenging part. Just so, so, I guess because yeah. I'm always expecting people to come up with the thing. I think you can't change this easily. I mean, it, no, there's so no easy answer. Right? There isn't. So I'm sitting at the moment on a working group with DOI and Cabinet Office uh, and talking about actually how do we get housing strategy developed in a more kind of holistic way. And what, what I think I'd like to end up with is where the Liberal Running Party has set out is that we have a vision for affordable, accessible, suitable housing for everybody. And I think what that means is we all know that housing is a bit of a spectrum. Some people are right on the one side where actually you might, might be sofa surfing, you might be homeless, right to where the other end where you might own, a, own your own house and have, have it completely free of any mortgage and, and everything in between. And it might be that at different points in your life you might be at different parts of that spectrum. So it's mm -hmm. quite easy to move you know, from commissioner's rental to private rental, from private rental to ownership or back, back down again. And I think it's government's job to make sure that the transition between all those different types of, of home tenure is, is actually quite easy for people and it's quite achievable and reachable. Okay. Well, I mean, housing 
is a pretty national item. But yeah. I'm thinking of Ramsey, I mean, really the marina, flooding, I mean, all those sort of things. Flooding is another big one that's coming out a few times, but not just flooding, but actually the impact of some of the plans on parking in the town as well has come up. They're losing a lot of spaces, aren't they? Miss? Yeah, so I've been talking to the DOI uh, about actually, let's not lose those spaces, let's try and replace them. You know, I think mm -hmm. we, we accept that we absolutely need flood protection <laughs> in the middle of Ramsey. It's the highest flood risk on the Isle of Man, so let's get that sorted. If we have to lose some spaces on the quay to get that flood protection, we have to live with that, I think, but we shouldn't lose them from the town as a whole. We should move them somewhere else where they're more suitable. So it's one of the easier places to park, if you ask me. But, but that's, and that's that, important, I suppose, that for that is, That's the whole attraction of Ramsey, actually, is, yeah. is you go to one of these out of town shopping centres in the UK and you don't pay to park, and that's one of the attractions. And to my mind, Ramsey is very much the same. It's mm. not it's not in Douglas, it is very much an, an out of town uh, shopping retail centre. And I think if we're going to try and keep that alive and keep that going, this idea of, of easy, accessible uh, shopping, it's got to be at the forefront of that. And whether that means uh, free parking, which I think it does, whether that means more parking, whether that means regular shuttle buses. I don't know, whatever the view is, mm. but whatever we do, if, if the DOI are going to remove or reduce the number of car parking spaces, they have to replace it okay. with something else that makes it easy for people to get in and out of town. And as I mentioned, has the marina gone quiet now? Because it hasn't heard anything for ages. I haven't heard anything for quite a while on that, actually. You four against so, or the party? Do you have a, a, a particular opinion on this? I, I, it's very difficult, really, because I haven't seen the final plans. So when you hear about what people are talking about in yeah. terms of, oh, it'll create a lot of, it'll protect the free public open space, I think that's, that's a tick. But then when it's, oh, but we might need to build a significant housing estate out there, you think, hold on a second, that starts to be concerning. So until you see the final plans, I think it'd be very difficult to come down one side or the other. Mm -hmm. But I think my gut feel is there are some key things we need to protect. So that open space has to be public open space, whatever whatever happens down there. It can't become a massive overdevelopment. What is there, if they do go ahead with something, it has to be done in, in a sensible way. And actually, really importantly, if something is to go ahead, it's got to get through that environmental assessment stage, because actually that's quite an important marine area for, for the island, and we want to protect that. So you get back in, if you get back in, you're, you'll be heading for a ministerial position, I presume. You'll be working with government. Um, yeah, uh, not you've made details of the cabinet office, something like that. Would be not your, your not necessarily is the answer to that. Oh, so actually, one right. of the things we've talked about as a party is, yeah. is actually, would you want to leap straight into a new government with, with unknown people in it. Actually, you don't know, so it will depend Well, you know on maybe half them. Yeah. Who knows? But, but what I mean is, if, if you find a chief minister and a team that you can work with, maybe we would end up uh, in inside that, that government. It might be, though, that we decide, you know what, actually, we can't work with whoever the next chief minister is and their team. We'd be better off sitting on the back benches on the scrutiny committees and doing the job that I've been doing sure. for the last few years. And so. also, Liv Van put up themselves, of course, Kate, to yes, be the lead, uh, to yeah. be the chief minister. Would you be in that running? Because I haven't heard your name mentioned yet no, at all. No, it, it's not something that I'm, I'm thinking about at this point. So Why I'm, not? Shouldn't you... It, it comes down to a mandate. So if I'd have gone in... You just know you're not going to get it, basically. No, if, if we'd have had 13 candidates yeah. in the party and actually they all got elected, you've got a very clear democratic mandate then to say, actually, you know what, I'll, I'll throw my hat in the ring. Yeah. But because we're not running with that many candidates... So the independents are not going to vote for you, whatever. No, I'm, I'm, they might do, you never know. But uh, my, my view at the moment is actually, let's see, let's see what happens after the election. Let's see who gets elected. And if we do have a, a substantial number of, of different parties, you know, there is a massive yeah. swell for a party-type government, maybe we'll have that conversation. But I think that's an outside chance so it's not something I'm And let's just on. play the game here. And if you did get in and you were happy with them, where would you most likely fit if you had a, your own choice and where you, you could see something? That's a, the most that's a really good question, actually. So I've, I've quite enjoyed... Cabinet office. Yeah. The cabinet office would be good. I'm, I sit in the cabinet office at the moment, obviously, yeah, but, as a, as a yeah. member. But I've quite and enjoyed sitting on the uh, Justice Committee as well, looking at, at that side of things. So actually some kind of role inside Home Affairs or even Treasury. Actually, my view, and I think I've said this every time you've asked me, is I'll do any job that, that is presented. <laughs> <Everyone says that. laughs> I do try and just get... No, I, I get that. But, but what I'm trying to say is actually for me it's not just a, a statement that I'll do anything actually I genuinely am interested in just about all aspects of, of government mm. and so if something comes up and presents itself I know there are there are problems across the board in infrastructure in health in education all of which will impact my constituents and so if I think I can do a good job in any any department that's where I'll be and the question just to ask all members of parties if you had a fallout in whatever you would you resign and you know would you go for a by-election or would you carry on or you know these yeah so I think the position that we've taken as a party is if uh, if we have a falling out uh, and actually, if we leave on, on mutual kind of agreeable terms, I think that's kind of, that's acceptable. But if we have a, a blowout, mm -hmm. then I think I would expect uh, all of my party members to, to, to resign from their, their seat and, and cause a by-election. And you yourself? Oh, obviously, yeah. yeah. I, I think that's, that's... And you're going to carry on in your position in, in, in with the van? You yes. Know? Yeah, I don't see why not. Uh, yeah. We're working pretty well together at the moment. We're starting to go build a bit more of a, a momentum, I think. So we've, we had a stall at Timwell Day. We're going to have another stall down at the Royal Show. Okay. Um, Quickly, what would well. you, anything you want to see put through you've you got on your agenda to... to 
see legislation passed on anything particular? So I think again, coming back to housing, housing. That's, that's got to be the key one. I mean, I started yeah. a leasehold reform process now with my private members bill about getting easier access to management rights. The next step is actually easier access to purchase. And then there's a lot of other problems okay. again with leaseholds, but housing is, it's got to be fundamental. And who do you want as chief minister then if it's not you? It depends who throw their, throws their uh, name in the ring, if I'm we, perfectly we, honest. But the, the people that have talked about it so far, I think all of them would, would do a pretty good job. You know, David Ashford has, has kind of been touted as a potential. He so is, definitely so says Alf. not, but he was. I know, I know. Yeah. So is Alf. Alf said he'll wait after the election. Yeah. Alex has said the same. But actually, I think, I think all of them would do pretty good. But there's also a lot of other good uh, backbenchers as well who I think would do an excellent job. Yeah. And finally, finally, would you work as a coalition with other parties? Do you think yes, that's, absolutely. That's we, we already do that now anyway. Yeah. So Liberal Van is part of the climate change coalition. We work with the other parties on things. So absolutely, that would definitely carry on after the election.